Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at using ZimSocket inside of the Node.js environment. We're going to take a look using just Node Package Manager and Zim, and then we'll see how to bring in the socket package and use that. We'll also take a look at how to use it in another framework such as React, Svelte, Angular View. Maybe we'll use Svelte. Okay, uh, so let's um, uh, go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we go to the code section here. Uh, normally we work in with a CDN and we would just bring in copy on the template and put zim so underscore socket there, and we could start working with socket right away in our JavaScript, and we don't need anything else. Uh, actually, in zim 016, we updated our socket server to the latest version of socket IO uh, to handle uh, this cores issue that we were having once we moved to a new server. Um, so you would do zim underscore socket two to handle that in the future. It will just be zim underscore socket again. And in the node environment, it's just the zim underscore socket as well that we're using. So anyway, that would be our normal route, but we're using it with Node Package Manager here. So we're going to follow the instructions on how to get set up with just a normal zim. And then we'll also take a look at how to use one of the templates as well and bring in zim socket right there, which is fairly new. We've had the other helper modules for a while. Uh, but it took us updating to the latest version of socket IO to be able to bring all that together in a package. All right, let's go to the instructions. So here they are. Uh, and we scroll down past the CDN sort of version of things and get right to the node package manager here. And we're going to follow this setup. We're running node through Vite. And then we're going to in, insert the template and install the node package manager version of socket, uh, zip socket as well. Okay, so let's follow those instructions. We'll drop this down, F11. And here is my VS code. I would suggest getting VS code. I'm in a GitHub folder where I, I do all of these other things and we want to make a new app here. So just be in any folder, I guess, and we're going to use Vite. We pull up to get to the terminal. So if I pull that up, I'm at the terminal, or you can follow the instructions here with a control shift back tick, or you can go and get the terminal here and say new terminal. So here we are, and we want to check to see if we have node, node-v. So if you don't have Node, you'll have to go get that. And indeed, we do have that. So now I can go npm create uh, vite like that. And that will start vite. The project name, we will call it socket uh, example like that. And the package name socket dash example. We'll choose vanilla. So enter and type JavaScript instead of TypeScript. Uh, that makes us this Zim, uh, not the Zim socket folder. What did it make us? Socket example, do you see it? Socket example right there. And we uh, have our public folder right here. Uh, let's see, we don't need that though. There's an index file. The index file calls main.js. Here's the main.js. And we want to make sure that we've changed directory into that before we start installing anything else. Usually, I would take any of these folders and just drop those folders directly onto VS Code. Um, do you want to see that? Well, I can do it from here, too. Uh, so here's my directory. I'll reduce this down. Ah, oh, desktop reveal. And what was it called? socket example and I drop that onto VS Code. When you drop it onto VS Code, all you're dealing with is the current directory that we got here and then and then any installations will happen in this directory. 
or you can just CD. So like back over in this one, we could have CD'd to the socket example directory and then, then we're good to go. But I'm gonna close this one down and work right in here. This is how I'm used to working. Okay. So just make sure that you've CD'd as it says here in the instructions. CD to whatever your project name is. Okay, now we're going to install Zim. So that's that one. Oh, by the way, you can copy any of these things. So if I control C to copy that, and come on over here and I right click and it will paste it into our uh, terminal and hit enter. So this will install the latest version of Zim and create JS, which is what it's built on. And in doing so, update the socket uh, or the package.json here. And there's the Zim version being brought in. We also have to get our uh, Zim socket as well, uh, which we, I suppose we could do now. So that is npm. Well, I should show you where we would find those instructions. Um, or we could just Let's complete the, the, the plain Zim project uh, uh, following these instructions, and then we'll go get the socket stuff after. Okay, so replace the code in the main.js with the template. So here's uh, an example, I guess, of that. Copy that. Or if you were using TypeScript, you'd have to bring each thing in individually. Uh, but we're not using TypeScript, so I'm copying this. Copy. And that's in the main JS. So you'll see that the index file right here, which gets run when you run Vite, as it says, I think, well, in the instructions, it says how to run this thing. We'll see that in a second. Uh, but anyway, there's the index page. It gets run, but it calls main JS. So in the main JS, we can get rid of all this Bing. and paste. Um, let's see. We're not using the Zim. This is slightly grayed out because we're not actually using the Zim namespace. If we did, Zim, we could if we wanted to. Uh, Zim.frame, Zim.circle, nope, <laughs> Zim.circle. Okay, so if we use those, then the namespace would be being used. But because we've used this Zimplify right here, that will simplify it. And we it turns all of the Zim objects into globals which means we don't need the namespace there. Oh, <laughs> we need something though. We don't need the namespace. And this is how we tend to use Zim with the CDN. So any examples that you see will now run as expected with the Zimplify to make everything global. Okay. Uh, occasionally we have, we have a blob and a window class and occasionally those will conflict if you're using other frameworks or libraries. So if you wanted to simplify without turning those to be global, then you could run this command, at which point, anytime you use the zim window, you would have to put zim.window. Anytime you use a zim blob, you'd have to use zim.blob. But all the other ones like frame and circle would be without the namespace. Okay, so great. Uh, that's the template. We save that up. And now we have to figure out how we're going to run this thing. So if we come on down below here, um, when we run it, we'll get a little icon that is a Vite icon. If you wanted to, you could copy all these things right here. And that's in the index page uh, right here. And note that we've got a link to the Vite icon. These are the Zim icons. <laughs> it's a bit of an overkill perhaps. But anyway, those are pointing to all of the various sizes of icons that gets used in various mobile uh, environments, etc. So we've saved that and great. You don't have to do that though. And then here's how you start it. So npm run dev, copy that. Come back here into our terminal, right click npm.run dev. And then we have to alt click on this little link that it provides us, alt click, which I've done. And here is the Zim template that we just made showing up in our browser. Uh, note, 
Oh, it still says VDAP. I suppose we've got to change the name to whatever our, our name is. But note the little Zim icon is up there rather than the Veet icon. And it's not Veet app, but rather a socket example like that. And we may as well put the Zim in front of there. So there we go. We save that. And we uh, it refreshes automatically there. So as soon as I saved it, Veet. Um, did the page reload on that and we can see it says zim socket example hey what we're going to do with our socket example is have a circle <laughs> why not that seems to be our template but anyway i'm going to press when i press here on the stage our circle will move to that location and if there's another version of this open so we'll open up two windows or if multiple people were looking at this indeed the circle would move on there thing as well and if they if they press somewhere then the circle would go to where they pressed so basically um, it's multi-user that's what the socket is used for and we have lots of examples of that okay so that was it if you are going into your deployment then you would npm run build and that would make uh, a packaged or a bundled um, code for you that you could put on your server and run it on the server okay um, so that's the normal Zim one. If I go up to the top, does it have links? Yeah, here's a link to Zim Socket. So we're going to go to Zim Socket now. Uh, make this a bit bigger. So here's Zim Socket uh, client, not the server. So there is at Zim.js socket dash server if you wanted to host your own server, but we can um, use our own. All right, uh, so if you were importing from the CDN, it would look something like that. But if we're in Node Package Manager, um, we would install that one. So I guess we're going to install that now. And then we can use this code right here. And that's the server stuff. And then we have examples as well as videos. And we'll add this video to there, right, probably right up at the top as well. Because that shows how to get all of this set up in Node Okay, so installing, uh, this is what we want to install right here, at zim.js slash socket. So we come back here, and we need to exit out of our Vite, so control C will exit. Uh, if you didn't know how to do that, that could be tricky. So to do our install, it's npm i, and then we want at zim.js slash socket like that and here it goes to get that and if we take a look at our package.json here you'll now see that we've got zim.js socket is also uh, been brought in here back in our main directory we want to import socket from from that location. And then we're going to end up using the socket. Here's the example right down here. And do we need this information? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so Zim socket URL is uh, available in the import. It's um, a variable that is given to us that will go to the Zim site and use the current Zim servers to um, do this, the server side of Zim socket. You can set up your own if you want um, by installing the Zim socket dash server. But at, at which point you might be on like your local host and port 7000 or something like that, then you would put local host 7000 as a string there and you would be running your own socket server. Okay, so you can go through all that. But anyway, this is how we're doing it here. So I'm gonna copy the socket and the socket ready. And there's some information on how to get to the socket server. So there we go, copied that. That goes in our ready event. So right inside here, paste. 
Okay, let's have a look and make sure that everything's hooked up. There's the socket. There's Zim socket URL. We're calling a test. We've got our circle. We're centering it on the stage there. When we stage mouse down, so when we press anywhere on the stage, stage mouse down works anywhere on the stage. Mouse down, like if you S for the stage right here, S for the stage, stage dot on mouse down would only work on objects that are on the stage. So at that point you would need an object on the stage and then you would capture a mouse down on any object that's on the stage, but not on the empty stage. So there's a slight difference there. That's why we use stage mouse down event. That comes from CreateJS. Uh, we are then animating the circle to wherever our mouse X is and wherever our mouse Y is in one second with an ease of back out. We're telling the socket, we're setting an X of frame mouse X and frame mouse Y. So we're telling everybody else that we've just pressed on the stage basically. Everybody else will receive data and a little D there. And if there is something in the X, if that's not null, because uh, just be careful because it could possibly be zero. Uh, so anyway, we want to animate the circle to an X of whatever that data X is and whatever the data X is. So we're basically animating it to that other person's X and Y and with a back out. Isn't that cool? Uh, sockets can be a little bit tricky because you've got to handle both whoever's doing it and sending that information. And in the same code, you've got to handle if that information comes from somebody else, what do you do? Okay, so it's a little bit about it, like a dream within a dream. It's sort of like Inception or something. It is really the height of uh, creative coding, sockets, or uh, coding in general. It's just a wonderful thing, very magical. All right, so we save this up and let's see if it works. Uh, that means we run our Vite again. And I'm using the up arrow to see my NPM run dev like that. And I hit NPM run dev. And I don't know, do I still have this live open here? We refresh here. And there's a circle and note that as I press here, the circle goes to wherever I press. Uh, the fun thing is, is if we open this up in a second window here, or a second tab, and press, there's the circle. If I come back here, these two tabs basically are the same. So ready? I'll run it down to here. Woo! Isn't that cool? Uh, will I be able to see this? Sort of, I guess. Isn't that nice? So Zim socket now is working. It's sending information across. Um, good. All right. That's basically it. And you can go out to all those examples that we have on the HTML page here. Uh, somewhere, not that one. Be back here. So socket examples with patternoids. These are not in Notepack or no, in the Node environment, though they're all in the CDN. And we have a place where you can color eggs, for instance. Copy that, paste it into here. And then when I choose a color like green and make a green, see how we're collective coloring here? And I go, no, 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 I'm blue, and these will be blue. Burp, 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 burp. And there they are blue. One cool thing about this is if you refresh, it remembers that somebody's been here and it colors in up to where it colors in the last 100 uh, colors. So uh, that's multi user coloring. And where was, where were we? Is it back here? Nope. It's an empty one back here. Yeah, back here. There's an example with an avatar, uh, an example where we're making collages, a multi-user diagram where everybody can do the diagram, multi-user gallery. Taking turns is tricky. So that's, uh, hey, it's my turn, then it's your turn, then it's your turn. And we have remote control. So remote control is one thing here, controls multiple things somewhere else. We have a, uh, show it here. We have a version of 
Pong that's like that as well. I should probably put that in here as in the links. There's an HTML chat. But remote control, yeah. So imagine everybody with their mobile devices are, um, are controlling something on a main screen. That's the kind of idea uh, of a projection or a main computer screen. All right, so you can go through all those examples and see. And basically, the socket stuff will be the same internally here. It's just we're importing things a little bit differently and working in the node environment. Speaking of node environment, let's go and make this happen in, uh, what do you want to use? You want to use view? Let's go in and make this work with view. So to do that, you would come out to, uh, uh, not there. <laughs> Why don't I close that? You would come out to um, here and go on up. Which one is this? This is socket. So we want to go back to the main Zim one. So where can we find that Zim package right here? So in the main Zim package, it also will guide you or link you into the various templates. So here's the setup that we just did. And the setup is going to be uh, there's templates for Vue, React, and Angular further and down, so that's where we're heading. Setup's kind of similar, I suppose. There, Vue's felt Angular. And you want to go to grab the packages. And the easiest way probably to do this is go to the green code window and say uh, download zip right there. Okay, so if you download the zip and the zim templates, you are going to get something that looks like this zim templates. So this is the downloaded zip. And then inside the templates, there's Angular, React, Vue, and Svelte. We're going to use this Vue one. So what I usually do is I copy this template. So don't use the template directly, but I right click and is that the copy? <laughs> Still not use these little icons from Windows. Anyway, I copy that folder. Come on back here and paste. <laughs> yep, that little guy. Uh, so okay, and that just moved on me. But we're going to rename this F two. We will call. I've already done one with a view socket, but uh, so what should I? Maybe I'll delete that. <laughs> and it was this one right here, and we will call it uh, view socket. Why not? View dash socket, like so. Now that I've got that, that's the template for running view. So I'm going to drop that on my VS Code window there. Here it goes. Here. Boop. And that opens up my template where I can start installing things. And, okay, you don't want those. So I open that up here. Uh, if we take a look around, we have in the package.json, we've got some uh, Vite stuff, we've got TypeScript, we've got um, Zim as dependencies and Vue as dependencies. So let's follow the instructions on what we need to do now here. And that was not there. It's still left over socket. And here is that and that and socket example. Nope. Okay, so I think it's back here. Yeah. All right. There we go. So follow the setup instructions and adjust the code as follows. So the setup instructions are basically up here. We want to do, instead of in, in putting the template and we're going to put a different in one, but we want this one. Oh, no, not quite. NPM create feed. No, we got beat already. So NPM install zim.js is probably next npm install zim.js we might have to 
Did it come with node modules with it had all of the modules already, which is odd, I thought. Oh, I've done that. Okay. So when you get it, you may not have installed. I can't remember if, if the packages come with the node modules. You might have to go NPM install. Um, so, and that would have probably installed all the modules for you. Yeah. So you got that NPM install, and that would install your your everything that was in the package.json, and that would be good. Okay. Uh, I can do that now, and it'll probably tell me uh, it's, it's all... Looks like it's all up to date anyway. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. Uh, it's probably in the instructions somewhere. <laughs> okay. So what have we got then? We need to now find out where the code is. And this doesn't seem to be in public. So let's look in source. There it is right there. That's an app view right there. So uh, there's the Zim frame right here. Here's our imports. At the moment we're using TypeScript, so this will be a little bit different, but not too much. And then if I scroll down here, here's the ready function right here. There's our circle. We can take a look and see what this looks like. I've got a few examples in there. We can basically take that stuff out from there, and we're going to put our socket stuff in after we install our socket as well. Okay, so if we run this one, that is npm, what was it, run dev. And here's our little link that we can alt-click on. Alt-click. And somewhere, somewhere something has opened up. Ah, here it is. Zim with view. This one has an animated red and purple circle. And when I release, we get a little bit of an emitter. We can also use this dial right here to change the size of it. So a sample component from Zim, a little draggable circle. And there we got Zim inside of a view app. So let's see if we can get it so that as we press a circle here, another view app in a tab, we'll do the same thing as we had before. Yeah. Okay. So hmm, we have to exit out. So control C to exit out. Yes. And we have to npm install. Do you remember what it was called? At zim.js. Sorry, this is so small on your screen, probably. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out how to make my, my terminal bigger. Uh, at zim.js slash uh, socket, like so. That then brings in our socket. And if we take a look at the package.json, we've now got our socket in there. We want to bring in the import. So basically the same stuff that we did before for the socket. So that was here. And there's the import of the socket right there. And looks like that might be having a problem. We might have to close down our VS code and open it up again to, to make our TypeScript work. I don't know. Hopefully it'll all work. So if we save that and close desktop reveal. And open it again. View socket it was. Let's see if that brings it back. Uh, no, it's still giving us a TypeScript issue. Which it shouldn't, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, no, thank you. Um, let's bring in the rest of that code then. Const socket. And this, we we are using Zim there, and if we're importing socket, we should be fine. Okay. Actually, back in that other one, we did have a Zim.circle that we didn't really need if we weren't using TypeScript or the namespace. And then we're in our app, so we can get rid of this stuff 
everything inside the ready. So make sure that you keep your ready event to the end of ready and paste. Okay. Mm, why is it having a problem with Zim? Oh, right. Okay, so we're bringing in a circle, which means we actually don't want a Zim circle in here. Where'd it go? New circle right there. Okay, and we also don't need these other things anymore. Save that up. Oh, this is working now. That's not. We couldn't really figure out how to uh, declare that properly in, in TypeScript, but it'll work. It's just uh, some weird thing. All right, and we're uh, coming over here, and we refresh this. Oh, we got to run it. Sorry. So back here. NPM run dev. Enter. And here we are. Refresh. Uh, for some reason, we're not actually seeing the circle to start. Uh, maybe we're missing a stage.update. But anyway, there it is. Let's have a look back at the code here. Yeah, socket.onready, we got the, cir the circle. Okay, so s.update, we'll add that to the examples. And now, sure enough, uh, that refresh. So on refresh here, now we see that. I noticed that in the last example there. All right, so that's jumping around. Um, we copy this one into a new tab. There's the circle. Looks like it didn't start at the right place, though. So that's one thing we should do. Maybe that's why we did the simple example so that we didn't have to bother starting at the right place. <laughs> uh, anyway, there it is. Neat, huh? Oop. Oh, can't see it. Ah, peekaboo. <laughs> okay. Uh, very cool. So that's Zim socket inside of view and to do felt and angular would be very similar. Okay. Uh, great. Whoa. Yeah. So um, nice. Now what do we do? <laughs> we end. We end it. Oh, there we go. I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a Zim Explore. We've taken a look at how to use ZimSocket inside of a Node.js environment. And welcome to the world of creative coding with sockets. It's quite wonderful. We have done other videos. You can see the videos down below in the Zim Socket and the Node Package Manager. Other videos about sockets, not inside the Node environment but those are explore videos and intro videos as well. So check those out. Ciao, have a great day or night. Cheers.